I've seen one person get this correct so far. No, just your class. Just yours. So we said there's only one way to spell tigers, right? But if you have six posters, how many options are there? We're talking total outcomes. We're not trying to spell tigers. How many options are there for the first poster? Six. Once you use one of them, how many options are there for the next poster? Five, because your friend has already used one. How many options are there for the next one? Then, two, one. Multiply all of them. 720. That is how many ways you can use the letters G-R-I-S-T-E. Because G-R-I-S-T-E spells tigers when you do T-I-G-E-R-S, obviously. There are six posters. So at random, you're going to be, you're the first person, Christian. You're going to be handed off six posters. You're going to take one and then hand it to Kobe. How many posters are there for him to choose from? Five. Then he takes one. Then he hands it to Jerome. How many posters are there for Jerome? Four, three, two, one. Reason being, this is a permutation. Why is it a permutation? There's one significant difference between permutations. The order matters. Thank you, Abby. Order matters. So listen, it's a permutation. How many posters were there? Six. How many people were there? Six. You and five friends. Do you not count as a person? Six people. So the total number of objects and the total number that you're using, you're using all six. Okay? So that, you would hit S to D. You get point zero zero one three eight, but that's not percent. You move it over twice, and you get point one four percent. That's what I said. You got it. Supporting any of that. So that is focus. Combination. You want to think of? I don't like smoothies, so I use the best. Y'all ever had a, like a cream slush from Sonic? Yes. Y'all know what I'm talking. What does cream stand for? Cream. Cream. Ice cream. Y'all know that? Yes. So like... So what does ice cream stand for? No, okay, so cream. it's called... Cream. Calm down. It's a slushy with ice cream. It's a slushy with ice cream. That's why it's called a cream slush. That's all I was asking. So listen. So whenever you make a smoothie or a slushy, whatever, you throw all of the ingredients in, right? This is my favorite. It has strawberries, lemon, and ice cream. It's called a lemon berry because it has lemon and strawberry. You don't just throw the strawberries in and mix those. You don't throw, no. You throw it all into the blender, and then you blend it. And out comes a beautiful shake, whatever you want to call it. So combinations are grouped. It's not in order of any sort. How many groups of three could I make out of this class? Does it matter what order I choose you in? No. no. Just a group that you're making. Okay? So whenever you think of permutation, I want you to think of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich where you have to have a certain sort of order. And then combination, just a group. Okay? So we're going to do this without knowing any formulas first. You would normally do it with a formula. Um, but count the possible combinations of two letters chosen from the list of A, B, C, D. So it says count. So what do you think your answer is going to look like? A number. A number. So please explain to me why earlier today, all day today, I've been walking around looking at your answers and not yours, but they haven't been numbers. Okay, count means number. Okay, y'all? So here's what you're going to be doing. It's not 12. Two letters from the list. So we're going to start with A. We're going to have some sort of order around here. So A meaning like, I'm not just going to be like, oh, A and B, D and C, like some sort of arrangement here. So A can be grouped with B. A could also be grouped with C. A could be grouped with D. So then you move on to B. B and A, but is B and A already grouped together? Yes. So you don't have that one. B and C, is that up there yet? No. No. B and D, is that up there yet? No. No. Then move on to C. C and A, is that up there? Yes. Yes, they're right here. So C and A is not one. What about C and B? It's already up there. It's already up there. What about C and D? No. All right, then go to D. D and A. Yes. 
Amps yes. right here. What about D and B? Yes. Right there, D and C. Yes. So how many counts all the ways? How many are there? Six. 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 Six ways. So your answer would be a number. So there is a way to do this with uh, math instead of because obviously this one was simple, but when the numbers are bigger, it's not going to be as simple. So yesterday, this is like a slight review. So if you were not here yesterday, you want to do this. Yesterday we talked about permutations. Permutation said the order matters. So permutations, you would have had A, B, A, C, A, D. You would have also had B, A, because according to permutations, A, B, and B, A are two different things. Then you would have B, C, B, D. Y'all see the difference? Yes. C, A, I'm just going to finish. C, B, C, D, D, A, D, B, D, C. So in permutations, there were 12 of these. Permutations had a formula that you could use, okay? It had NPR. What did N stand for? Total number. The total number. So total. And what did R stand for? The number of places. Number of places, number of objects, um, the number of objects, being whatever it was, okay? The number of ranks. Then there was a formula, okay? It had N factorial over n minus r factorial. What is a factorial? Like, what if I wrote, let's do an easy one. What if I wrote 4 factorial? What is that the same as? 4 times 3 times 2. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Right? And then you would multiply all those. So, today you're going to hear about combinations, and the formula is super, super close. So, combinations, you have n to cr. Go ahead and begin writing this. n cr, I'm going to explain it. What do you think N stands for? The total still. And then R means the amount of objects used. So like in this one, in our first example, how many total objects are there? Or how many total letters are there? Four. Four. How many of them were we using to make a group? Two. Two. So whenever you get to do your homework, it's, it's classwork, but this lesson's I've been going long for people. So, whenever you get to do this, you don't have to list them. You can use the formula I'm about to show you. Okay? Yes, so, the formula looks identical. It has n factorial over n minus r factorial. It has one extra piece, and it is an r factorial in the denominator. Okay? So, this is the formula used for combinations in the top, in the pink. And then permutations, you can't tell. It's like a purplish. All right, but N and R represent the same thing in both of them. N will always be the largest number, the total number, and then R will always be the objects used, the amount of places that there are, things like that. All right, so we're going to uh, learn some special things about combinations. There are a couple. If you didn't finish writing down, it's right there. There are a couple rules that we learned as well. What is zero factorial? <coughs> One, um, and then something else I want you to know, four factorial times two factorial, or like anything that looks like this, because you're going to come down to problems that look like this. You cannot, you'll want to, you'll want to multiply four times two, which would be eight factorial, right? You cannot do that. <coughs> what you can do is write out, because four represents four times three times two Oops, wow. times 1, and then whenever two factorials are next to each other, they're being multiplied. So, so times, two times, times 2 times 1. That is not the same thing as 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Do we all see that? So I want you to make sure you refrain from ever doing full, like something like this I've written, because a lot of students do it. Okay? Did you ask a question? Or? Okay. All right, so... The number of combinations, so this is an example right here, the number of combinations of four <coughs> objects taken two at a time. So we just did that. We had four letters, A, B, C, and D, and we were grouping them in groups of two. So the math way to do it, there, it's a combination because you're grouping, and plus it says combination. Um, how many total, there are four, and how many are we using? <coughs> two. Two. <coughs> So we're going to use a formula together. 
So we'll have 4 factorial over, because that's n, four, over, four minus two. yeah, 4 minus 2 factorial so times two. 2 factorial. What is 4 minus 2? Two? 2 factorial, 2 factorial. So whenever factorials are right next to each other like this, they're being multiplied. Um, but that does not mean that you can make this 4 factorial. Because 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's 24. What is 2 factorial? 2. 2 times 1, which is? 1. 2. Oh, nope. And then what is 2 factorial again? 2. 2. What's 2 times 2? 4. 4. Is that the same thing as 24? No, so that's why I'm trying to make sure that you guys refrain from doing. I'm just proving a point to you. Yes, dear. I have a question. Yes, dear. Like, they have that, like, in our streets are not, like, written out and canceled. That's what we're about to do. Okay. I just was showing you why it's not 4 factorial. Okay. So, you can rewrite 4 factorial as 4 times 3 times 2 factorial over 2 factorial, 2 factorial. So, what do you think we do from here? Cancel out one of them. All right, so 4 times 3 is 12. What is 2 factorial the same thing as 2? So the answer is 6. So we showed it to you on the last slide when you had A, B, C, D, and we're making groups of 2. There were 6 groups that you could make. Um, a lot of students today have been making the mistake if they got to the end and they had 3 factorial on the bottom. Is that equal to 3? No, what does that equal to? 3 times 2, which is 6. So the only ones that match their factorials would be 1 factorial is 1, right? Um, so what's 2 factorial? 2. But all of the rest of them do not do that. 3 factorial is not 3. 4 factorial is not 4. Okay? So let's do an example together. You order a sandwich at a restaurant, you can choose two side dishes from a list of eight. How many combinations of side dishes are possible? So why is this a combination and not a permutation? It does not matter. Order doesn't matter. You can order mashed potatoes and mac and cheese. That'd be too starchy, but whatever. You can order mac and cheese and mashed potatoes. It's literally the same thing. It's going to pop up on your plate in the same way. So we're going to use a combination. What are the total number of dishes? Eight. And how many are we using? Two. So we're going to use our fraction. N factorial, so what would that be? Eight. Over N minus R factorial. What's N minus R? Eight minus two, which is six factorial. Then times R factorial. What's R? Two factorial. So now, again, none of you should have a calculator out because we're not using calculators. We're working on it together. So Christian, stop moving your fingers. Put it away. Stop moving your fingers. Put it away. We're literally doing it together. I'm not even, like, pushing you off on your own without your calculator. I'm just asking you to do it with me. We're going to make 8 factorial match. What number in the bottom? 6. So 8 times 7 times 6 factorial over 6 factorial. 2 factorial. So now what can we do? Cancel out the eight, uh, the 6 factorials. He's not even here today. And 6 factorial. They cancel out. What's 8 times 7? And then 2 factorial is 2 times 1, so 2. 56 divided by 2 is 28. So there are 28 different ways that you can order 2 sides from this restaurant. Yes, sir. Because 8 factorial is the same thing as 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Wait, so you don't have to do the all those other times 5 times 4? No, I stopped at 6 factorial because, again, what does factorial mean? That means that means the rest of the numbers, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But since there's already a 6 factorial on the bottom, they're, they're worth the same amount. Does that make sense? This problem. Yes. Why did I do that? Because I needed to match 6 factorial on the bottom so that I could cancel 6 factorial out.
Because they're being multiplied, you can cancel out. We're going to do this one. It's in your student journal. 379, or you can write it down. How many possible combinations of three colors can be chosen from the seven colors of the rainbow? How do I know that this is a combination? Literally says it. Combinations. So how many total? Seven. And then how many are we using in our combo? Three. Three. So we're going to have seven factorial in the top. Seven minus three, which is four, four factorial. And then three factorial. So what am I going to make the top match? Four factorial. four factorial. Seven times six times five times four factorial. Four factorial represents four, three, two, one. So we got four factorial, three factorial. So four factorial and four factorial will cancel out. Let's do this. Seven, what's, what's six times five? Thirty. So then we have times seven is two ten. Then we on the bottom we have three factorial. That is the same thing as three times two times one. So that is six. Six goes into twenty one three times with three left over. So thirty five is the final combo. Mm -hmm. Questions on this one. All right, so this is probably the hardest problem because um, we're going to do uh, probability with this. So what I want you to know about combinations and probability, it's still the total number of outcomes on the bottom, so total outcomes. And then on the top, there are the favorable outcomes. Favorable. So total number of outcomes and favorable. Let's read this. A uh, problem. A yearbook editor has selected 14 photos, including one of you and your friend, to use in a collage for the yearbook. The photos are placed at random. There is room for two photos at the po top of the page. What is the probability that your photo and your friend's photo are placed? At the, are the two placed at the top of the page? So, since it's a group, so think about it like this: you got a book, you got a page, right? Two pictures are going at the top of the page, right? You want it to be you and your friend. You don't care if it's you on the left or you on the right. You don't care. You just want to be the two that are at the top of the page. So whenever you have a combination, there's always going to be one favorable outcome. Like when we did the tigers at the beginning of the lesson, there was only one outcome because there's only one way to spell tigers. In this instance, we don't care if your friend is on the left and you're on the right or vice versa. Okay, so what we need to figure out are the total number of outcomes. So it's a combination, okay? How many total pictures are there? 14. How many are going at the top of the page? Two. So 14 factorial over 14 minus 2, which is 12 factorial, and then R, which is 2 factorial. So what am I going to make 14 factorial match? 12. 12. So 14 times 13 times 12 factorial. All over 12 factorial, 2 factorial. So I cross out my 12s. This is the point where I don't remember what 14 times 13 is. So, Tyler, it's all you. What is it? I think it's 281. 182. 182 over, what's 2 factorial? 2. 2. So we get 91. But that's not the answer, so do not circle it. Because this is probability, right? So probability, your answer has to be less than 1. What did we just find down here? The total number of outcomes. 14 possibilities, or 14 pictures, only 2 of them are getting chosen. So the bottom is 91. Now you would hit S to D. Go ahead, Tyler. Point. Just tell me the whole decimal and then we'll make it. 1.01. 1. 1. Wait, yeah. I don't know how you went around that. You erased it. Oh. Mm. Point zero 0.01. No, it's 1.01. Point. 
That's zero. No, because you're going to, I'm just asking for the decimals on your calculator. Oh. Then you're going to move it over to? I thought you were talking about 2%. So there's 1% chance that you and your friend will be chosen at random to be at the top of this page. No. Are the odds in your favor? No. Definitely not. All right, so here's what you're going to do. A lot of my class uh, finished, or my last class, finished or got a big dent into this. So 21 through 36. I'm on it. And then tomorrow, make sure you turn in your test review. I'm on it, man.